Hi, I'm Jack the Shipper and today I'm making a free 15 minute video, Super Turbo League Finder video for HSMG.com. I assume most people watching this video will have heard a little something about me at least, but in case you haven't, I don't want to waste too many time on introducing myself. So here you can find my 250k in one year challenge, my interview with HSMG.com, and my blog if you want to check it out, just pause the video and type the links in your web browser. Ok, let's get right to the action. Standard open from the button here. Never limp this kind of hand. You give 5 7 off in hands like that to good equity, that might full pre flop. I think the C bit is good, the board is pretty dry. On a turn, I would give up with all my bluffs. Um, as a general rule of thumb, giving up when the board pairs with bluffs is in most cases the best option. And on the river, we have an easy fold. No need to hero call here. Villain's range is really strong. And he's never really exploiting you there by bluffing because he's also obviously readless. Jack 5. Jack. However, I'd like to point out that Jack D suited to Jack 5 suited are really great hands for re jamming versus people who open to white. Like if somebody is opening more than 85 80% of buttons, re jamming a hand like that will become much, much more better than flatting it because you will have good equity when called and be very rarely dominated while at the same time when you get folds you're just printing money um, here basically you could flat but you could also fold I think it's fine we can't really re -gem here because we're still too readless against this guy I think this is a fairly standard C bet. You don't have a made hand, you don't have much showdown value at least. And there are hands that can make like you don't want to give him free cards here. On top of that, when you do make your draw, you have a bigger pot which is gonna be really handy when you do hit it. And we take it down, nice. Here you see that he his instinct was to fold, but he ended up calling. I would personally fold here preflop. I'd like it more with Jack Nine or Jack Ten, or with Jack Eight suited even. But the fifty bet it really does make a difference in super turbos. People often think, oh, it's only ten more, but if you optimize all of those things, that's how you get insanely good win rates, you know. And not only is his range most likely stronger here, but you also have to put in more chips to see a flop. And in super turbos it really really does matter, I cannot emphasize it enough. So I would probably fold here pre-flop. Here I assume he's gonna check with the intention of check raising, which is what I would do as well. Um, readless I would probably check and then go all in probably, like check jam. Because of stack to pot ratio, I think if you just make a min raise or whatever, it's gonna look too strong. And if he flats, it's gonna put you into weird spots on the turn. Okay, unfortunately, he checks behind. When he checks behind, it's a little bit annoying. But here I would lead out way over half pot, like 60, 70, maybe not 100, because you're never bluffing 100 here, obviously. Although, it's not that bad, because we can pretty much disregard balance here in the first few hands against an unknown. Also, you never want to be bluffing this board. I mean, everything is gonna call. There are a ton of draws here that can call, and exactly for that reason, we are gonna make it a little bit bigger to get extra value from those draws when they miss. Like some of those draws, you know, any diamond is a draw, a 5, a 3, an 8, all of those hands can call. On top of that, he can maybe call some 7x, but he's probably not calling 4x or 6x if he's any good. So here I would bet like 70 and get max value from the draws. I might even bet ace high here against certain opponents, but I would need very, very good reads for that. I'm not doing that readless here.
Okay, here the river is a nut worst card. The tray axe got there, although it is doubtable if he calls with like a tray axe on the on the turn. But he might have like king tray with the king of diamonds, and that's definitely calling it. That just got there like twice, you know. <laughs> um, so we definitely not bet here. My standard line here would be to check and fold if he bets and hope that he checks behind some weird king seven without a diamond or something like that. Which might happen, you know, it's thirty dollars, everything is possible. <laughs> but I definitely never bet here. I'd also never check call. I just check fold here all the way. Okay, when you bet 150 here, I really don't see what you're trying to do. We just talked about it, villain's range has improved a ton here, you know. The things he's calling with on the turn all got there. And the things he's folding, you're probably ahead of. So in other words, he's not really folding anything that is better than your hand. And he's calling, and he's calling everything that is. So basically what you're doing is value owning yourself here, you're basically just giving him chips. You can't bluff him off anything here, like anything at all. On top of that, you don't get paid by anything worse even. So there is zero point in betting here. There's not even a point in checking to induce because there's nothing in his range that you beat. And I think this is a really, really big mistake because like I said earlier, you just literally burn 150 chips here and that's gonna affect your win rate over the next few games, you know, like over multiple games. It will be bad because you burn these chips here. You often see it in the hold manager if you check your EV graph how when you like spew somewhere or lose chips that you shouldn't and it's not null and pot, it's just like a played out pot, a post flop pot, then you see your EV going down and it will take a lot of games because in equity you're not winning that much per game. You're not really crushing anybody in Super Turbos, you're just winning slowly but surely and playing slowly but surely better than the opponent because you're losing more less chips in, in spots you don't have to. So this will definitely affect your win rate and I think this is a really huge leak. However, I think it doesn't come up that much, but still pay attention. Yeah, obviously you have to fold now, I mean. The king seven hand, um, pretty standard jam. I would jam there all day long. King X or Ace X, if you have ten BBs or less, it's always going to be near optimal, or pretty much always going to be the optimal play to just open jam against most people. Okay, and we lose the first game, unfortunately.